Radio FM. When you are dealing with very difficult people, listen more, say less. Because they are like uh, some inflammable material waiting to explode. So if you start contesting wits and contesting words with somebody who is extremely angry, you will make a bad situation even worse. When in doubt as to when to speak, just keep listening. When you get into an interaction with a customer, you want to be an effective listener with both verbal and nonverbal cues. I would recommend you not. You show interest. Use body language positively. Use phrases as verbal feedbacks. Ask questions at the end. And then when the guy is done, say something like, Sir, so just to, to sum up what you said, you have two children, one a boy, one a girl. They want to do a master's in business, but you're not sure whether or not they should study for international business, whether they should study for marketing strategy or study for development finance, because they all have degrees in engineering and mathematics, and they all want to businessmen to take over your business. Sir, just to be clear, is that what you said? You, you need to sum up. And when you give that kind of feedback, the client understands you fully heard what their situation was, you fully digested it, and because you have a full appreciation of what their issues are, there's every chance you will give an effective solution. When you want to pursue active listening skills, it's also very important to keep affirming and encouraging the speaker who's talking to you. So keep paraphrasing intermittently. So sir, to be clear, did you say? So sir, to be clear, uh, would you say? Oh sir, that's a very good point you've made. Keep affirming their own success at communicating. When you do that, it encourages them to elaborate more and more and more on what they are saying. So you need to do what is called affirming the speaker's success at communication. And any meaningful action is based on solid feedback. So don't forget that. Let me talk now about what I refer to as mental engagement, another key tool in achieving listening success. With mental engagement, you have to be consciously, actively engaged in the process of listening to accurately feedback a person's thoughts and feelings. So with mental engagement, what you do is that you mentally screen out all distractions, noise, background activity, even the speaker's accent and mannerism. Trust me, you can hear somebody speaking, and the accent might be so funny, you find yourself it, it, being humored by what they are saying, rather than listening to the substance of what they are saying. Please, don't focus on their locally acquired foreign accents. Focus on what they are saying. When you hear a statement, create a mental model and feel the speaker's feeling through your own feelings of humanity and ask yourself some mental questions while you are listening. So does he mean this? So would he be looking for this? So is he referring to that? So just do a little internal debate that the thing is going on so that you can be better at giving feedback to the prospect or client you're dealing with. So there are some barriers to listen. Let me just sort of go through that quickly so you know that listening can, can be tough. Now, if your own life is filled with untold stress, your mind is constantly buzzing about the account you lost yesterday, the pressure in last month's management performance review, this client who worried you last time, his back in the banking hall. Please, if you don't remove the clutter from your mind, you will struggle to listen. Worry, fear, anger, grief, depression, all constitute barriers to listening. Individual prejudice. He is from this tribe. He is from that tribe. Nothing good can come out from there. So as soon as they say, they are like, ah, they are here again. L look at these ones. So individual prejudices can also constitute a barrier to listening. Language differences, I've alluded to that already. Boredom. Sometimes you are bored. So when a guy arrives, you are hoping you can escape the branch and go home and sleep. Or you want the clock to hit four so that you can leave the hostel and go home and rest. How can you, a nurse, be in a hurry to go home and rest when you work in a hospital? Please, don't use boredom as a barrier to effective listening. So how do we overcome some of these barriers? Well, sometimes good listening requires that you 
temporarily suspend mentally all unrelated topics. Your mind should be a blank canvas. To be an effective listener, you have to manage what goes on in your mind. Very, very important. And listening opportunities arise in this social media age in a multiplicity of ways. You can have face-to-face -face brick and mortar meetings. You can have telephone conversations. You can have electronic conversations. Skype is one common example of electronic conversations. Nowadays, you can have conversations by email. That is also part of listening. If I send you an email and I wrap up with four bullet points to sum up what is very important about the request I'm making, and your response to be, you address only two of those four bullet points that sum up the way I'm feeling, you know you and I are going to have problems. I'm telling you. So begin to, to, to begin to sum up, there are generally two kinds of listening, passive and active. And all the descriptions I've made in this presentation relate to active listening, not passive listening. Because of the two, active listening is considered to be the key to effective customer service. And active listening skills develop over a period of time and require constant practice. When you succeed as active listening, wow, a lot of blessings come your way, both in relation to excelling in the workplace and excelling everywhere in life. Active listening assists you to build solid, healthy, profitable relationships. Two, it helps you to more expeditiously resolve conflicts. Three, active listening helps you to be an excellent record keeper and improves your accuracy when it comes to professional delivery. So at work, it means fewer errors. At home, active listening could save you money, make you money, save your marriage, help you to develop solid, resourceful, intelligent children. Because the more you understand them, the more you can be a blessing to them. So remember, active listening is a master skill. It requires constant sharpening. So if you are going to use active listening to transform your delivery of customer experiences, practice it every day without fail. And come up with team huddle sessions in your various groups where you simulate listening exercises, use role play, use case studies to begin to develop your capacity to listen. Because active listening skills constitute a key component of superior communication skills, which is a key attribute in achieving customer service success. Thank you for listening.